Okay friends, one of the first things we need to do is safely raise and support the vehicle. I like to do it with the suspension hanging. Let's remove all five of our lug nuts and the wheel. <laughs> Looking at the differential here, you're going to see your center flex hose. Let's take some brake line pinchers and go ahead and pinch this off. For our next step, we're going to need a nice collection bucket. Put that down on the ground underneath this area right here. This is where your banjo bolt is and there's going to be fluid that comes out of this. Just break that free. Now I'm just going to make it just a little snug so it's bottomed out. Let's continue on by removing these 10 millimeter headed bolts. Grab your caliper, go ahead and take it off. At this point, let's go ahead and remove this banjo bolt completely. Let's empty out our caliper. Go ahead and remove our brake pads. Inspect them real quick, looks great. Awesome. Let's continue on by removing our caliper bracket by removing these two bolts. Okay friends, making our way over to the bench, we're going to prepare our brand new caliper. To do that, I like to take it completely apart. We'll set this aside for now. Small pocket screwdriver. I'm just going to take off this boot. We're going to set it aside because we're going to need it later. Take off your banjo bolt and make sure you don't lose either of your gaskets that are there. Set that aside for later as well. Let's continue on to the sliders. If you grab on the boot and push on the actual slider itself, you should be able to kind of separate the two. We're going to slide this out a little bit. You want to add a little bit of lubricant along here and then try to get some lubricant inside the boot area right there. Make sure you get into the very end right here. There's a little lip. That's where the boot's going to ride and it's going to help keep moisture out of there. Inside that boot, get in there as far as I can. I especially want to try to get up into the center area here. Now we'll just go ahead and slide this back in. Perfect. Give it a little wiggle back and forth. Make sure the boot's sitting inside its grooves on both sides. Wipe it down. Do the same to the other slider boot. Now I've got both sliders done, let's continue on with that caliper grease. We're going to go along this ear, this ear, and along the caliper piston where the pads are going to ride. Set this aside. Moving on to the bracket, the next thing we need to do is strip off these tins right here. Take a little bit of that caliper grease and you're going to go along the areas where the tins are supposed to ride. Take that same tin that you took off of there, slide it back on, do the same to the other side. Perfect. Let's grab all of our parts and make our way back over to the vehicle. The next thing you want to do is clean and prep your bolts. You want to make sure that you took off any existing thread locker and of course put on some brand new red thread locker. After that, take your brand new bracket right here that we just finished lubing up, put it on there. We're going to snug up these bolts and then we're going to torque them to 100 foot pounds. Now it's going to be time to reinstall our pads. One. There we are. Make sure the pads move around freely. Now it's going to be time to get our caliper on there. If you were to look at it, you can see the bottom area is going to have this little hooky-do. That's going to set down on the outer portion of the bracket. Okay. Slide those sliders. Perfect. Take your new caliper slider bolts, start them both in, we'll snug them up and then we'll torque them to 22 foot-pounds. Mm -hmm. 
The next thing we need to look at is our flex hose. You want to make sure that you don't have either your gaskets on there on either side. And you also want to make sure the area where the gasket's going to ride is nice and clear and free of any debris. This one looks good. If it wasn't, you can go ahead and clean it down with some sandpaper or a brush, whatever you need to do, but make sure it's clean. Now it's going to be time to take our brand new banjo bolt. Take one of your little copper crush washers there. We're going to slide it into the flex hose here. Put on your other gasket and then put it right up into the caliper hole there, just like this. So now we're just going to bottom this out and now we'll torque it to 27 Newton meters. Let's go ahead and get those hose crampers off of there. Now the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and pump up the brake pedal. You want it to get as firm as possible. That's going to help force the fluid up inside the caliper where the air is. And then we're going to open this up and we're just going to kind of let it gravity bleed for a little bit. Work out as much air as possible. Now that we have the brake pedal pumped up, let's go ahead and open our bleeder screw. And we're going to watch as fluid comes out of this. Just give it a minute. So there we go. We've got fluid coming out of this. It looks like it's coming in a pretty good stream. We want to just make sure we don't see any more air bubbles. Just give this a couple loving bonks. You can even try to move this flex hose around a little bit. Once you feel as though you have a pretty steady stream of uh, fluid without air, we'll go ahead and close this and we'll, then we'll continue with a manual bleed. Okay friends, so the next thing that we need to do is check our brake fluid. You want to make sure that that reservoir is topped off because we need to continue by bleeding this. To do that, it's going to be easiest having a second person in the vehicle, or of course you can continue with a single person procedure, it's just a little bit different. Essentially with a second person, what you want to do is have them inside the vehicle and they're going to slowly pump up the brake pedal. They're going to give it three nice slow pumps and then hold it on the third. Once they do that, they'll say holding. We're going to open up this bleeder screw and fluid's going to come out. So you need to make sure you have your collection bucket. Once the fluid stops coming out, close it and then ask them to pump it again another three times slowly and do the same procedure until you don't see any more air coming out of the bleeder screw. With that said, let's get started. Go ahead and pump up the brakes, please. Okay, so I definitely saw air. Let's go ahead and pump them up again. All right, let's continue on, go ahead. That was great. So on that last one, I didn't see any air bubbles come out. So that tells me that I'm gonna try this one last time. If at that point I don't see any air coming out, then I know that it's good. Let's go ahead and pump it one more time, please. All right, so if you happen to see air like I just did, that just lets you know that you gotta do it again, okay? So now going with the assumption that you finished bleeding this and you have no more air coming from it, let's go ahead and clean down the area. Take your bleeder screw cover, go ahead and put it on there. So once you have this bled, of course, you'd want to go back up under the hood and double check that brake fluid. Make sure it's nice and full. Let's get the wheel back on here. We're going to snug it up, then we'll get the vehicle back on the ground and torque the wheels to 130 foot-pounds. Torqued. 